Kick Code Cheese! This episode of Kid Coach Cheese Outdoors is brought to you by QMAX. <laughs> Yeah, I have no problem being in the whole thing, fishing whole thing. It's I E S D and Kid Coach Cheeks, all right? That's fine. Bronze statue's fine. I don't want you to do gold. I don't want you to do gold. Just do a bronze statue, and that's fine, all right? Oh, shoot, I'm on fire. Stand by. All right, I got I to gotta get out of here, all right? Shake these. Don't forget, brush your hair. Shake these. Hey, folks, I apologize. Fishing Hall of Fame again calling me, trying to put me in the damn Hall of Fame. You're such a liar. What am I gonna do? I'm gonna have to say yes eventually if they keep hounding me, so, uh. <sighs> really? <laughs> Is that how you gonna start this one? <laughs> I guess that's how we're gonna start this one. Whatever. Alright, today's episode is gonna be striped bass. Got some great people on board. First trip is going to be a couple of United States Air Force captains, Ooh. Kelsey and James. Kikuchi's just rules. All right, take them out there, do a little chunk trip. Kelsey is uh, still uh, reeling off a of shark week, so she catches 800 sharks. James puts in some nice bass in the boat. And that's that. So let's uh, let's go take a peek at this uh, first fish. All right, we're out there fishing for a while. Captain James talking crap about me, and he doesn't realize I put him in the kitchen. Not only do I put him on the kitchen, the bait drops on top of the kitchen table down there. He sets it up, almost pulls a hamstring, bring that fish on board. Take a peek, all right? Check it is. We're fishing. We're not catching fish, but we're, we're fishing. What? <laughs> yeah. Ladies and gentlemen, Kiko Cheese, you have witnessed the gooch. Don't let him know you're there, though. When he pulls, you gotta say hello back. Oh! That fish on? That's your fish, bro. <laughs> oh, yeah, baby! I think she's on. You may be on, too. James, you got a freaking good fish on there, right? All right, that looks like a fish. That looks like a real fish. So let's think about this now. All right, go. Go on your hand. You go up, come back here, up and over. That looks like a bass because you come on top. Bass, bro. That's a bass. Yeah. That's definitely a bass. That's a bass. You've been out, Rye. How do you feel right now? I'm feeling a little better. A little better. A little encouraged. Excellent. <laughs> yeah. A little bit more positive. All right, James and Kel flew in from Stuttgart, Arkansas. Oh, oh, that's a nice fish. On. Nice bass. That's a nice bass, bro. Say, you know, that's a great fish. Say. You lost them? Shit. What do you think, bro? You told me. Right? <laughs> oh, I'm, I'm not even gonna do anything. I like the Albano clan. He's a loser fish. Hey, let them know they did it. <laughs> let them know they did it! <laughs> no pressure. John was in uh, Da Nang right before. I like that you let drag off a little bit so you don't lose it. That's a good fish, bro. I Okay, hold on, I'll do it. I think I did, I moved it back. Yeah, that's exactly what you're supposed to do. Are you nervous at all? A little nervous, you put me under pressure. <laughs> John, go back to the back here, bro. Let's see how bad it playing. Kels had a knife fish, John, what happened to that, Kels? He gone. John, let him see that yet. Wait till. I need a breather. Hold on. There's a fish on the other one. John, there's a fish on the one above you. Give me a yet. Kels, you do that one. So you got that fish. Oh, this is, this is scary monsters right now. <laughs> nice. Oh. Fish landed. Team Alvano. Fish. Hey, wait a minute. Nice fish. Hey, wait a minute. Yeah, there <laughs> yeah, it wasn't the time. 
Yeah. Yeah, yeah, bro. Good hook shot. All right, folks. Another bad job for an Air Force captain. All right. I mean, the guy is—he's challenged to say the least. He can fly a plane anywhere. Matter of fact, that could be him up there right now. When it comes to fishing, the guy's got more problems than a man. All right. Let's go, with my boy John. Now, right now, John, New York City firefighter, retired. 9/11. Kid Coach Chiefs down 9 11 there as a police officer. Horrible scene. So I'm gonna go on the side right now, which I never do. But back then I remember leaving the uh, Ground Zero and we drove away in buses. Everybody was standing on the sidelines with these big banners and posters. We love the police, love the police. Now what they do, they hate the police, all right? They protest the police. So if any of my people out there, I think you mean you viewers, dead, not you people, you kook. Police, but if you know some you protest the police, it's no different than 9-11, alright? It should be the same feeling with the police. They're literally out there dying to protect you and so are the military, alright? So if somebody doesn't get that, I just want you to kindly walk over to them, put your one hand on their shoulder and just go up to them and go, not bad, is it alright? People are dying for you. Respect them, alright? I'm not going to go any further than that. Let's go to John Boys now. About respect. John's not respecting the technique of fishing right now. I went through this whole spiel with John. You'll even see it here. I'm going to stop this idea. Buttons up. You're going to know what's going on. I don't know. All right. But I thought a lot of people don't realize that these fish are going to swim with the current. You miss them. You didn't miss them. They're gone. But you just you failed yeah. to stay with them. All right. Go through this whole thing. I'm telling him what's going to happen. Sometimes fish go up current. He gets a bite, sets the hook, and he turns into a gently fish. I, don't, I can't even run this live because it's so long, how long it takes him to set this fish up. John right now, catching a killer fish, which we release, but it's a couple of, it's a couple of laughs. I almost cursed right there, by the way. All right, so take a peek at Johnny Boy catching a nice striped bass. Shake these, kick our cheese out to us. Johnny Boy now is going to be checking his bait. Last swing he's out, and uh, you start to see as he brings his line in, he starts to scope out, and you see the uh, line start to come up in the column. Obviously, that fish is already almost dying. The rigor more this, how long he's had it hooked. He doesn't realize it. It's probably 20 minutes later. It's too funny. Johnny Boy, fish on. So he just sees it right there. How you doing, Johnny? That could be a fish up there, bro. I think it is. That's what it is. That's good, bro. That's a bass, bro. <laughs> We're not proud. We'll take him anywhere we can get him, baby. Johnny Boy, that's a big fish. <laughs> We're not proud. That's a bass, bro. Yeah, boy. Let me get that. This guy right here. Nice fish, Johnny! Johnny! Oh, <laughs> well, that's a good fish, bro. Holy shit. <laughs> Yay! There he is! Come on out! Oh, yo! I got him! That's enough. There we go. Will you take it out to hand it? Yeah, you're as sharp as a wet bag of hair. That thing was hooked up for an hour. Hey, there, there we go. go. I think I got a little messed up on the hook ship. He's swinging. He's way out there. <laughs> oh, that's a nice fish, bro. Good job. Yo, bandit. On the chunk. That's a nice freaking fish there, bro. Dude, I told you something was messed up. I was like, I knew something was wrong. <laughs> That's how we do it. <laughs> <laughs> That's a nice bass. Good job, bro. Ooh, hoo, hoo. Fat belly baby. Yeah, that's a fat belly. It's coming loose. This is what we do. We send him back, baby. 
Come back when you're 50. <laughs> Look at it. Beautiful, beautiful. There we go. <laughs> 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 oh my god, god, he's off, he's on, he's off, he's on. Holy <laughs> shit. What's that swimming next to the boat? <laughs> oh, that's a classic. Uh, is that my face? <laughs> swimming next to the boat. All right, folks, here we are. The tip of the week is going to be a bunker snagging technique that uh, Team Giddy Up showed us. All right. Basically what it is, it's a unweighted hook on a drop loop about a foot and a half above the weighted treble hook. You can see John's got one on the high hook already, and the next fish is on the weighted treble. Not uncommon to get double up on these bad boys, get them in a live well's fish, and can't even get the fish as fast as you can, all right? That's the giddy up, double snagging rig. Shake it ease. All right, folks, guys, stop here for a second. I do a commercial break. I'm going to do it right now. I just want to show you a quick product that I got. Uh, I was on a blog, and I think this what? is how this gentleman found me in Q Don't Max. mess and call you uh, directly. About taking care of uh, the rocket launches, how, how to protect them and to uh, just clean them up, if you will. So he sent me a bottle of Q-Max salt, this stuff right here. And uh, wanted me to take a peek at it and see if I liked it, and uh, see if I'd use it on Kid Coach Cheese Outdoors. To say the least, I was amazed by it. Alright, let's just say that. I want to show you a quick experiment what I did. I went inside in my pilot house. I got to clean my pilot house. Uh, it oxidizes inside. Anybody has a pilot house, you know that the aluminum inside oxidizes, so you always have to treat it. People treat it with WD-40, and you say, well, why don't you use WD-40? Because it's not WD-40. This has, it's, I'm not going to get into the science of it too, but clearly it has 400% more working power than, look at that. Screw it. Look at this graph right here. See this graph right here? See the one on the left, the high stack? That's a lot of stuff Whoa. in there. See the one on the right? That's the Fugazi stack. There's not a lot of stuff in there. All right? So that's the problem. WD-40 doesn't have the salt inhibitors and all the other stuff that QMAX salt has, all right? And I sprayed this stuff on my hard top here on the rocket launches, and I just want you to take a peek at that. All right, you guys tell me which one you think was done in QMAX, either this side of the boat or this side of the boat. Obviously, this stuff. I'm going to show you exactly how it works. What I do is I take a paper towel. I wear gloves because uh, I used to know Michael Jackson. Spray the Q-Max on the paper towel liberally. And come up here, you'll see this oxidation come right off. Look at that. It's almost like a... Uh, I can't believe it with my own eyes. All that oxidation comes right off. Next one. See the next one come a little closer. I don't even have to spray it again, but I will. A little on the next one. I don't know if that camera is really showing you what's happening here, but it's unbelievable what this does. Again, this stuff will stay on here for five days. You know, longer than five days, but it's as simple as that. I mean, this, these things look newer than I, when I bought the boat. So again, guys, take a peek at it. Q-Max, salt water protection. Leading multi-purpose corrosion inhibitor, lubricant, and cleaner. I want you to try it yourself. It's not expensive. I want you to post below that you have what you think about it because it's badass stuff. All right, Qmax sold. Try it. You're gonna love it. I literally used it on my boat, and I went down the uh, dock and hit a bunch of boats, rocket launches, and stuff like that. They couldn't, they couldn't believe what they saw. Neither could I. Look at it with your own eyes. Shake and ease. Try it. Qmax sold. Think what she loves it. I hate that shit. Alright folks, now let's go to Captain Kelsey, alright? United States Air Force Captain. I ain't dumb. All she was catching was sharks. And you're asking why sharks? Because sharks have spidey senses. They have a better sense of smell, olfactory glands. Right here, definition. Definition for olfactory, I ain't dumb. I don't want anybody to be challenged on this show here. You have and, some nerve. Uh, they, have a, they have a better sense of smell. So what happens is these baits now we're fishing 80 feet in water. It's, it's, it's later in the season, hot weather, fish going down in the pool of water in the column, and they hang out there. I'm not sure what they do. They may do the Macarena for them. But they're down in deeper water this time of year, and visibility is horrific down there. People ask me all the time, hey, Kiko Cheese. Sometimes they call me Cap. Kiko Cheese, do you use fluorocarbon when you chunk? And the answer is always, 
negatory big bend, all right? Reason being is these fish are feeding on scent and smell. Usually the scent, they're coming to the baits and they're gonna grab the baits. Live presentations, I always use fluorocarbon. If it's eeling or whatever, if I'm live baiting anything, I'll be using fluorocarbon. However, if I'm chunking, I just use a 60 pound, any, any monofilament you want. I use a clear monofilament, I use camel or anything like that, but I use a clear 60 pound monofilament, all right? That's your leader, he is about yay big. Well, five, five feet, five feet's cool, all right? So, just to give you an idea of what the visibility is down there for these fish, let's send down the Kiko cheese can right now, all right? Here I go, sending down this camera, going down into the abyss as we speak, and you'll see the lights start to dim. I mean, the camera obviously is losing light to the film. However, it's just giving you a good indication how dark it is down there and the visibility. Do you think that these fish, I'm gonna let you make that decision yourself. Do you think that these fish are gonna be leader shy at that depth? I think not get go Jesus, all right? So you should, don't be uh, spending $1,000 on, uh, on lead material here, all right? And the reason that these sharks what? now are getting these baits faster than the bass is because the, the shark, if you guys are watching shark, we have better olfactory glands. They have uh, they have better senses than the regular striped bass, olfactory glands than the striped you bass, and more receptors, all right? So they're gonna find that bait faster than the striped bass. They're gonna grab that bait because it's sexy, it's a fresh bunker, and they're gonna eat it. So you have to kind of wean through the dogfish to get the striped bass. But there's always light at the end of the tunnel, all right? Right there, look at this smiling guy right here. He's got a striped bass, all right? But that's what I do. That's what Kid Cochise does when he puts you on the fish. We use this machine right here to find these fish right here, and we catch them. It's simple as that. You don't always right? catch them. Jagged these. Let's take a peek at Captain Kelsey right now. Just nail a couple of dogfish, all right? Just have a goof. She's a dogfish fisherman right now. Jagged these. Just Kelsey.